Jason, welcome to the show. Trevor, thanks for having me. It's so good to actually have you. I mean, it's been a while since I saw you physically in person. I feel like I saw you virtually, and now you're here. Yeah. You know, mano a mano. I saw you virtually, too. It was, it was actually through the uh, lockdown. It was nice to watch you in, like, your home setting. Like, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed those. I shows. appreciate that, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. How's your daughter, by the way? She's good. She's six. She says hello. Yeah, yeah. She's still in love with you. I appreciate that. Hasn't waned at all. I, you know, that's all I look for in life is I go, <laughs> like, how much do little children like you in, like, a good way on yeah. TV and stuff? Yeah. That works. I mean, it worked for the Beatles. It worked for, yeah. all, you know, kids love the true great. So I think you're on your way. Let's talk about the music. You know, uh, you're getting back out on the road again. Now you've got a brand new album, which is... It seems like a, just like a love letter, essentially, to the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. right? Georgia Blue. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it, if I understand it correctly, it's, it's covers of like famous songs about Georgia in some way, shape or form. But first of all, why the album? And then like, why did you choose to make it the way that you made it? Well, I was watching uh, the election, presidential election, and I saw there was a good chance that Georgia was gonna go blue. And I was very excited. And I know, like, you're not supposed to tweet, like, pledges excitedly. You're not supposed to make promises on Twitter when you're excited. But I thought, if Georgia goes blue, I'll make a record of my favorite Georgia songs. I'll donate all the proceeds to, to voting organizations right. in the state of Georgia. And, uh, and it did. And it was great for me because then it's like, oh, I get an excuse to make a covers album because mm -hmm. I'm a songwriter and I'm supposed to go in with all these songs written and I got to play them for the band and it's terrifying because I don't know if they're any good yet. And, you know, the band hears them and then we record them. And this was nothing like that because it was like, I can take these songs that I love, R.E.M. songs, Gladys right, Knight, right. Otis Redding, James Brown, you know, um, uh, Cat Power, uh, Indigo Girls, all these songs that I know already are great songs going in and just go in and work the machines and have fun with the bands. I've always wondered this, when, when you're making like a covers, so you call it a covers album or is yeah. it a cover album? I was, covers album. Covers album. Yeah. Well, I'm just learning new things every day. So it's covers. probably, like overseas, it's probably a cover album. Yeah, I think we, know, we, like we always Drug and drugs, it's the same. That's kind of. true. Yes. Yeah, we, we said cover album when I was growing up. And, and then your name as well. Some people say Isbel. Mm -hmm. yes. You say Isbel. I say Isbel. And even in Texas, there are Isbels who will correct me on how I pronounce it. But you Isbel. My name. But I'm Isbel. Yeah. Because I've said Isbel before and you didn't correct me. No, I don't, I don't correct people, uh, you know, myself because it's like, get creative with it. Doesn't bother me. Okay. Letter, Letterman never said it right. I was on his show so many times. He never said it right. We told him what it was. Ah, no, I know. I'm going to say But I mean, in, in everyone's defense, it is I-S-B-E-L-L. -L. It looks like his bell. It really does. So how did it become his bull? I, I don't know. Probably because we're from Alabama and sometimes we mispronounce some things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the town where I grew up, the, the, the closest city was Muscle Shoals, and they spelled it like muscle, even though they meant it like a muscle Oh, shell. wow. They spelled it like a muscle. And it's in North Alabama, so it's nowhere near the coast, so everybody's always confused. Okay, okay, that makes, okay. Yeah. So covers album, Jason Isbell, B-E-L-L. -L. Yes. I like this. You see, we're getting to know each other. We are. This is, this is good. Um, the tour. You were one of the first artists who came out and put pressure on not just the fans, but on the venues to say, hey, guys, we can do the shows, but let's do it in the safest way possible. You know, we've got to get people vaccinated and people or at least have to get tested before they come to the shows. And at first you got some pushback, but then now like venues have jumped on board. You know, the biggest promoters have jumped on board. It's becoming the industry standard. Seems like a risky move to make initially but you felt really strongly about it. I did, yeah. And you know, there were others who were doing it at the same time, some people who did it before I did it. Um, but it was the right thing to me. And you know, I got into this business and this job because I wanted to enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. And this was the thing that I loved doing the most. And I worked hard for a long time and got real lucky and finally got to the point where I don't feel like I'm going to work when I get up on stage to That's do my nice. job. But if I'm up there worried about people getting sick in the audience and maybe people dying because they came to that show and caused right, something, right. I'm not enjoying my job. And I don't want to do it that way, you know. It shouldn't have come down to us. It shouldn't come down to entertainers. It shouldn't come down to venues or promoters. You know, in my opinion, there should have been leadership from the top 
we shouldn't have had to step out and say, you know, I'm going to do this. But were you, were you worried, though, that you would alienate some of your fans or lose people who'd say, like, oh, Jason, why are you forcing me to get vaccinated? Why are you buying into the... Were you worried about that at all? No, I have spent a lot of years trying to run people off using, like, my Twitter, <laughs> uh, my inter you know, so when this day came, finally, it's like the ones who are left around are going to go along with I like this. that. And my, I'm lucky, you know, I'm lucky to have a fan base that are open-minded to things like this, that are into stuff like science and, you know, and uh, <laughs> so it wasn't as big a risk for me. And right. I understand for some other artists it would be a bigger risk, but I've spent years sort of pruning this cultivating this fan base by saying things that I knew would uh, offend a few of them at a time. And I think we've built a pretty nice little core of okay. people who want to do the right thing. You okay. Know? Well, I'll tell you this, man. Um, you always make amazing music. Um, the reason behind the album is, is pretty fun. I love that it was just a, a Twitter, you know, over, yeah. over promising on Twitter and then de de delivering. You got something deliver. people don't do, by the way. They don't deliver on Yeah, people Twitter say promises. a lot of things on Twitter. If this happens, I'll do this. And then you were like, no, I will, I'll make the album if this happens. And then you made the album. You got to build a Twitter account people can trust, Trevor. I appreciate it. It's important. This. Congratulations on the new album. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on getting back on the road. And uh, please tell your daughter I said hi. I will. Thanks, Trevor. Good seeing you, man. Uh, Jason Isbell and the 400 Units Georgia Blue Benefit album will be out October 15th.